Hey everyone, my name is Nicholas Wolken. I'm one of the co-founders at Karoo Shapes and today I would just like to walk you through my protocol of getting ready for a splitboard mission. So generally I would start getting ready for the mission the evening before and get everything packed. So one of the first things I would do is mount the skins on the board and then get them nice and waxed up for some extra glide. So for this I just take a piece of wax rub it into the skin like this you can see it's nice and white so apart from the extra glide it's also nice because it actually makes the skins stick better to the to the base of the board put your temperature on a very low heat so you don't want to burn the skins you just want the wax to just suck in nicely a third thing that's nice about that is that if the skin has wax in it, it doesn't build up as much snow and like wet or sticky snow. So it's kind of like impregnated pretty much. So if you have one of the new escalators, you can actually wax the top sheet. And this is really nice because it minimizes the snow sticking on the board because you actually don't want to be carrying a bunch of snow up the hill. Next step would be just to get everything ready. So I even unfold the poles and I just want to be able to get out of the car and start walking instantly. Preferably I like to keep my stuff all together, just use a volet strap. So I have a nice and easy to carry package. There is actually something I put on my poles just in case something breaks. I mean duct tape can help a lot for just like ripped uh, jackets or pieces so you don't lose all your down on the way and for just like little little uh, repairs here and there. That's nice. Same goes for the straps, the volet straps. I'll actually bring those along on the trip. This would be pretty much the setup before I leave the house in the morning. Easy to throw in the car quickly um, and we'll go into whatever's in these right now. I do bring um, just a bag, which is nice to have in the car to keep like just a warm jacket in there. If you get out in the morning out of the car, it's nice to have something to throw over that's just nice and warm, keeps you cozy while you're putting on your boots or waiting for a friend. I really like that. And um, I bring, of course, my boots. So what I like to do with my boots is I put the, uh, the gloves in there and my socks, which I'm gonna put on like right before I start hiking and not before in the car I wear a different pair of socks because your socks they get damp and that'll get you cold on the snow and I actually really like these super thin smart wool socks because I've realized they actually keep me warmer than a thick pair. My go-to boot for split boarding is the Phantom Slipper, the new one. I really like it because I can mount the crampons like super fast and they fit nice and snug so if you're climbing up uh, couloir or whatever it just gives you a little bit more safety and um, I, I also like the fact that you can stride really nicely with them they're really comfy to walk in and I can make them fit my awkward awkward deformed feet as well which is nice so I don't have as much foot pain yeah great boots really like them so I also would probably have a cliff bar or some kind of food in there, a little bit of drink for when I get back, just to get hydrated straight away again. And what I definitely also always have in here is some batteries, just in case your friends forget to replace their batteries in the beacons, which might just end your day in the morning early. So it's always a good thing to have. So what's in the pack? For the pack itself, I really like one which has a separated compartment for like your AVI gear and the actual carry gear. This just makes it easier and faster to pull out in the case of emergency. So in the avalanche compartment of my backpack, I would have the crucial essentials, which are the shovel and the probe. So I put the beacon on in the morning early, basically when I'm getting dressed. And I never put it in the pack because you might just forget it there. It belongs on your body, on your person. Yeah, definitely keep it away from your cell phone or anything that would interfere with the signal just to be safe. And don't forget to make the partner check before you start hiking. See if everybody's beacons are on and working. 
So for easy access, I would probably bring like some sheets for the skin so they don't stick together too much. I might bring a pair of goggles. Usually I just make it work with sunglasses just because I found out that I usually don't go split boarding in a blizzard, so I don't really need goggles. I would bring a map or some kind of orientation. I often also uh, save coordinates on my watch, but it's always good to have a paper backup. I might have some extra volley uh, straps, which is nice to have to fix the binding or the boot. It's amazing what you can do with those things. I would bring my Garmin inReach. Depending if I'm expecting not to have a cell reception, it's nice to be able to contact outside and call for help if needed. I would also always have in my pack a, a little emergency headlamp. I like it a little just to save weight and you're probably not gonna use it, but if you need it and you don't have it, it's a bummer. So have this one, Black Diamond even has like a Morse, Morse code SOS which is nice. So in the main compartment, <clears throat> I would have my phantom bindings that go on the board once it's pieced together. Don't forget these, has happened to me. Spent the day skiing. Definitely always bring a little puffy down jacket. This is one is nice just because it packs pretty small. It's nice and light, it's no extra weight. and. You never know, you might get stuck on a mountain or it might just be a cold day where it's nice to have one, like to get changed on top of the mountain. So I really like this micro puff. Bring enough water, preferably like warm tea to keep you warm on the cold days. Like warm days, I might bring a bit more because I'm more thirsty. Maybe not a thermos, but just a regular bottle. Depending on the conditions you expect to encounter, I would also bring like some ski crampons if it's like one of those mornings where everything is frozen solid and it's hard to get an edge in, these are really, uh, might save your day. I also bring a second pair of gloves, just in case you lose one or they get too wet. It's nice to have uh, just a backup. Not even that thick, but just to keep the wind and the worst weather out. For filming or shooting, I might also bring a walkie-talkie just to stay in touch with my peers and be able to communicate better out there. Um, I would also bring a SAM splint. This thing is super light and it's just really nice to offer some comfort for your friend. If he breaks his foot, he'll thank you for the rest of your life. It might even get you down the mountain where if you don't have it, it's just a pain in the ass and it's really easy to fix with the volet straps. So, good thing to have. Probably one of the most important things I feel to bring is a screwdriver or some kind of tool. I use like a bike tool with all the little bits that fit in my boots and my bindings just to be able to be sure to be able to tighten a screw or fix it. I even have some backup screws in here in case I lose a screw on the way up. Yeah, saves a lot of days for me. On the other side, I bring a knife, a Swiss Army knife or just any knife. Uh, you never know, might be needing it. Also nice to bring a, a lighter. In Switzerland we have a lot of huts. You might have like a rescue shelter there. So it's nice to be able to make a fire just in case. Or if your friend's a heavy smoker, you might make his day. So I have this little hidden compartment in here as well. And that's where I stash some small items small but nevertheless important I feel. So a little tube of sunscreen, just not to get fried out there. I always pack some emergency wax in my pack, which just allows me to wax in the base on the hill in case I misjudge the conditions. And you just polish it out and it'll get you down the mountain and you'll have a fun day rather than be sticking. And I do bring a little reserve kit. Might not be for you necessarily, but maybe for your friends and just allow you to have a good day. Um, there's nothing major in here. I have like some plasters to avoid blisters or once you have a blister, they're really nice to put over you and you can keep going. It takes the pain away pretty much immediately. I also have a rescue blanket in here in case somebody gets injured or stuck. 
It's surprisingly how fast your body cools down laying in the snow for a while. I've been in that situation myself, so I know how nice it is to have one of these. I also have some compressors in there to stop the bleeding of somebody who's injured potentially. So I also keep a pair of earplugs in there just in case we end up in a hut and I'll probably forget these if I don't just keep them in my pack. Off and on, you'll have a way better sleep with a pair of these in, one, in those huts in Europe. I also keep two little NEMA tablets in there just for those days where you get surprised and you really have to dig deep to go further. It's really helpful. There's like good vitamins in there, anything your body needs to get, get back and going and just that little energy boost. So those were the bare essentials, but depending on how steep I want to go or how technical or difficult the mission might be, I would also optionally bring maybe a rope, like this super nice Petzl rat line, which is super light. You can basically just pack that in. Even if you don't you end up using it, you won't really feel the weight. I love this thing. And maybe something, if you bring a rope and you want to repel somewhere, you might want to bring something to actually build an anchor. I use like some old but good um, little nuts here or something to hammer in a piton, a screw gate that works and some cord. Also some uh, little repel set with different slings for the Prusik and just build your uh, repel system. But for this, please remember this video is not sufficient to learn how to repel or use the rope. Also harness. Super light one, I like this one. Um, doesn't take up much room in case I don't need it, but if I need it, it's there, it works really good. And some crampons. Actually, these I'd probably take on the trip quite often, just as a backup, because they're nice and light. They have like steel points and aluminum backs, so don't take up much weight. Yeah, just good to have as a backup. Also, if you're using crampons, you're likely to use an ice axe as well. I really like to use like something that still has a steel tip, but is nice and light. And last but not least, um, I stumbled across these super cool little basic snowshoes. They're super light. They're from this little brand called Auftrieb. And they actually go in between your boot and your crampons. So you have nice spikes if it gets icy, but you still don't sink in when you're hiking up a couloir in like soft, deep snow. In terms of clothing, uh, I like to wear a base layer, depending on the conditions I expect. Like if it's super warm, I might take a thinner one, a little bit something warmer if I expect it to be cold. Sometimes I go with um, long undies, sometimes I don't, depends on the weather. I would also, maybe bring something against the sun protection in like uh, the spring conditions. It's nice to have something with a light hoodie that you can still wear and not be sweating underneath, but still protects you from getting sunburned. I might also pack a balaclava um, just in case I run into like really cold conditions, but this doesn't go along very often. Definitely like to wear a nice and breathable little cap just not to get heat stroke or sunstroke. And now for my favorite hat, um, my DIY hat, which I actually made from a gator, so you can use it both way, or if you're getting hot, you just open it up in the top and let some steam out. It's really nice. I would probably start off my hike wearing something like this, just a light little kind of hoodie that um, protects you a bit from the wind, but it's still breathable. I wouldn't start hiking in something like a micro puff or something, just you'll end up being sweaty. You actually want to start a little bit cold and you'll be warm within 10 minutes of hiking. My micro puff and my uh, shell jacket will probably be in my pack until I reach the top of the mountain. Then for the pants, I like bibs. Um, in spring when it gets super warm, I might go for something short just because the bibs tend to be warm and, and keep a bit of the heat in. But these have nice and big vents, so I like that. I like to keep my scraper in my pocket attached to a string just so I don't lose it. The scraper is for cleaning out all the ice and stuff from your board when you want to piece it together on top of the mountain. 
In addition to my riding gloves, I might also bring a pair of lighter, thinner, more breathable gloves just to keep my hands protected from the sun or maybe some wind or snow or rain. It's really nice to have. We covered a lot of ground here. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and enjoy your turns.